Welcome to this tutorial where we will be discussing the endomembrane system of eukaryotic cells. So when I say endomembrane, I mean membranes within our cell. And straight away we can think, ah, membranes within the cell, that's going to be organelles. But not all of our organelles are part of the endomembrane system. So we have our eukaryotic cell here, and we're going to write down that the endomembrane system is composed of membranous organelles. But the organelles that are in this system have to be working closely together. So they're either joined in some way or arise from the vesicles that transport various things around our cells. So let's list all the different structures within this system before we actually talk about what each one of them is doing. So this uh, organelle I've just drawn up here is part of the endoplasmic reticulum. It's actually our rough endoplasmic reticulum, which we know is continuous with the outer layer of the nuclear envelope of our nucleus. So we have our rough endoplasmic reticulum here, and we're going to have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum as well. Next we can see our Golgi apparatus, which is another tightly folded membranous organelle within our eukaryotic cells, and we can also see the vesicles that we have budding off the Golgi apparatus. And I'll just draw a couple more vesicles here as well, before we move on to the next component, which is our lysosomes. And the lysosomes, I'll put a few inside the cell as well in pink, we can see here. And we're going to have vacuoles as well. And vacuoles are quite large, so I'll draw them larger than our lysosomes and our vesicles, and also our plasma membrane. And before you get kind of confused and say, well, the plasma membrane is not a membrane within the cell, so how can it be part of the endomembrane system? We classify it part of the endomembrane system because of its activity and because it's working closely with all of these other intracellular organelles. And I've saved the best for last, so the last structure we're going to find as part of our endomembrane system is the nuclear envelope. So our nuclear envelope is actually two lipid bilayers and our outer layer is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, so it must be part of the endomembrane system, right? Now we can finally talk about how all of these structures work together to form the endomembrane system. So let's start within our nucleus where we're going to be performing transcription, which is creating new mRNAs from DNA. And those mRNAs are going to be transported out into the cell where they're more than likely going to associate with the ribosomes of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And our ribosomes will then translate that mRNA into an amino acid chain, which will then enter our rough endoplasmic reticulum, where it's going to be folded into a functional protein. So we're creating protein. And in our smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we're going to be synthesizing lipids and our steroid-based hormones as well. So these two endoplasmic reticulums are going to be working together in synthesizing new cellular products. But we need to be able to tell our body where we want these new products to go. So what we're going to do is send them off to the Golgi apparatus, where they're going to be uh, processed and tagged and put into vesicles. Once they're put into vesicles, we can actually start to deliver them either around the cell or around the body. So we can see this vesicle here either delivering its new contents to the outside of the cell or within the cell somewhere else. But what about our lysosomes? Where do they fit in this process? Well, our cell's not always going to get everything right and we need our lysosomes to be able to digest and recycle any cellular material that might be damaged or in need of replacement. So that's what our lysosomes are going to be doing. Now our vacuoles are usually either going to be large intracellular storage areas like in plant cells where we're going to store water and enzymes or they could be endocytic and a endocytic vacuole we'll have in our cells will be something called a phagosome. 
which is going to result from the engulfing of an extracellular object such as a bacteria and then is going to uh, integrate with our lysosome. Now the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is going to be involved in endocytosis or exocytosis as well but we'll use endocytosis and the phagosome as an example. So if we have a segment of plasma membrane here with a bacteria on the outside of our cell, we're going to have a process happen called phagocytosis in specific cells. What's going to happen here is our plasma membrane is going to begin to engulf that bacteria. So it begins to engulf the bacterial cell. And once it fully engulfs the bacteria, we've formed something called the phagosome or the phagocytic vacuole. But you may also hear it called a phagocytic vesicle as well. So the best example of a vacuole is going to be within our plant cells, but for this uh, process, either term is acceptable. So we've had that bacteria come into the cell and form a vacuole or a vesicle. And then we're going to have the lysosome join with the phagosome to form the phagolysosome. And the phagolysosome is where we're going to kill and break down that bacteria. So we can see now how all of these membrane-bound organelles either arise from extensions of each other, such as vesicles, or work together in similar processes. And the last thing we want to note in this video is the absence of the mitochondria and peroxisomes from the endomembrane system. This is because the mitochondria is going to be involved in cellular respiration and energy production, which is not part of the processes we have seen here. And the peroxisome is going to be mainly responsible for detoxifying certain chemicals within the cell, as well as oxidation of fatty acids. And it's also much smaller than our lysosome. And with that, we've covered the basics of our endomembrane system. So we can see how all of these membranous organelles work together to make sure our cell is functioning correctly. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.